This is episode 120 of Off Script with Trish Close, intimate interviews with interesting people. Joining me today via Skype, I have Daniel Uditi. Bonjour. Yes. Buongiorno. Ciao. Okay, you just told me I pronounced your last name perfectly, which is going to give me a ginormous head. Yes, yes. It actually, look, it got me all red. Like, all, uh, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, but Daniel, actually, how, how does your family pronounce your name? Daniele. Daniele. Yes. Oh, da da oh, look at you. You know, I minored in Spanish in college, can't speak okay. a lick, but I, I do work. I like to make sure when I pronounce things, I pronounce them correctly. Amazing. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the first time that I feel at home now. Oh, wow. Daniele Uditi. <laughs> so um, you are, uh, if people, I don't know, I know who you are because I watched uh, the chef episodes on Netflix. And oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, you own Pizzana in the LA area. Yes. I'm partner with Candace Nelson and Charles Nelson, with, which are the founder of Sprinkles Cupcakes. Exactly. Um, but your story doesn't necessarily start with Pizzana. A lot of people know you because you are a magician in the kitchen. Watching <laughs> You cook and make pizza and bake bread is just, I don't know. I hold chefs kind of way up here. They're kind of my superstars, my heroes. So I just, mm -hmm. I get a kick out of watching you make food. Oh, that's so sweet of you. I just, I just like food. I like to eat and I like to mix my hands with flour and water. What can I say? Exactly. Okay. We're going to talk a lot about pizza and how that all started for you, but let's go back a little bit. You are from Naples. Yes, I was born in Naples and I grew up in Caserta, which is a small town. No, it's a small town. It's a, a town close to Naples. Okay. What was it like growing up there? Big family? Uh, yes, we are uh, five of us. And, uh, you know, my mom was, was a chef. My auntie is a, uh, a bread maker. And my grandfather was a pastry chef on cruise ships. So... Wow. So you I got it all. Yeah, you got you got it honest, really. You grew up with food and food being a big deal in your family. Yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, my mom was cooking breakfast, already thinking about what was for uh, lunch and dinner and the next day. So she was planning ahead uh, e everything. So, and then she had to go to the restaurant and uh, cook mm -hmm. for a meal for people. And then I just opened up containers. So, oh, look, mom left me this and mom left me that. So it's great. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, I'm from South Carolina. I think most families who are into food do that, though. They're over breakfast. They're going, what should we have for dinner? What do you guys feel like for dinner tonight? And we haven't even finished breakfast mm -hmm. yet. True. I mean, you're there. I mean, like, let's, let's dirty the kitchen once so I have to clean only <laughs> once. <brother. laughs> so did mom work as a chef? Did mom work a lot of hours? Uh, well, uh, my mom used to work uh, uh, between uh, 17, 8 hour, 18 hours a day. So basically, uh, my recollection of seeing my mom was like, uh, hi, mom, good morning. Hi, mom, good night. Oh, <laughs> was that tough for you growing up? No, not really, because, you know, when I was finished with school, uh, I used to go to, to, the, to the small restaurant uh, just uh, to hang out and free food, snacking, uh, talking to everybody, uh, hiding behind uh, the dishwashing uh, station. It's great. I get wet. <laughs> That's like a dream. It was very fun. That's my dream come true right there. Um, so when you, when you say you grew up, mom was a chef, your aunt was a bread maker, your grandfather actually a pastry chef, were all, I just have this image that, especially in Italy, all you guys are all just sort of like cooking together and baking together and having Sunday supper together. Was that a reality for you? Uh, well, you know, chef works when everybody have fun. So right. basically holidays uh, for me was uh, at the restaurant. But uh, growing up, uh, my passion was more with flour because I saw all my brothers uh, they're helping my auntie making bread, just getting so fun, so much fun, dirty with the hands in the flour. It's like to me, look like something that the, the spider webs and that you, mm -hmm. you like, you know, you have your hands dirty. Wait, wait center here, here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then you open up. And then all that stickiness, and as a kid, you know, sticky, hmm, that looks fun. I want to try it. So yeah. that's why I went. And by the age of nine, I was uh, mixing and playing the with the dough and my auntie bakery. And then by 11, I found myself baking my first loaf 
hot face close to the oven <laughs> and say, oh my God, this is not a game anymore. It became a work. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So you said there's five of you, all boys? Yeah. Uh, four boys and one uh, and one girl, but You're... only me and the last one got to follow my mom' uh, footstep. Beautiful. Your poor sister, growing up with four boys. No, no, no. Poor me. She she was more uh, more hard than my mom on me. No, 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 no. No poor sister. No poor sister. Okay. <laughs> so you said the two you and your other brother followed in mom's footsteps. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We are the only the the, the only two that cooks. Uh, my first brother uh, cooks too, but he just does it for fun. He has another business. Okay. Was there anything that mom made for you that you sort of crave, like to to this day? Is there anything that she made that you were just like, oh, this is it. This is the best. Well, I I remember this dish that my mom used to make for me it was uh, basically a risotto, but it was cooked with milk instead of uh, water, and there was so much cheese and sweet peas and ham. Oh my God, you eat, like I was eating it by the spoon and then you get full after three, four spoons, but it was so good and so rich. And still at today, I cannot do it the same. So it pisses me off so much. You know, she she passed away, she passed away 11, 12 years ago. Mm. And, uh, you know, anytime that I try to do it and I fail, I just look at my mom's picture and I say, why can I not make it? Why you never taught me? Why you never show me? So Aww. I said, me talking. Yeah, no, I'm sure. And I'm sure she's probably listening too. Um, I love that though. I love that even though she's not here with you, I mean, you still carry all of that with you, her love of food. Oh, she She's always with me. The reason why I'm here in the United States and, uh, you know, and I have all this opportunity happen to me, I still feel that it's my mom that is putting me on the right track because she always loved to, to travel and she never got to do it. So I feel like she's traveling to for me. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Is this what you wanted to do at a young age growing up? Did you want to be a chef too? Well, that's another fun episode with uh, with my mom. When I wanted to be, when I told her that I wanted to be into cooking, uh, she uh, basically called me and said, come here. You see that calendar? Just take it. Now sit down and with a red marker, just take off all the red dates. I said, why, why am I doing that? Take it off and then you call me. When I was done, they say, okay, you see how many days are? When all your friends are out uh, having fun, you're in the kitchen busting your chops. So you're gonna, <laughs> you, are you still wanna be a chef? And say, yeah, I mean, my life has been like this until now, so I don't see why uh, make a change though. So did she, did she not want you to be a chef or do you think she was just sort of really painting a realistic picture for you? She she always was so real uh, with me, like, you know, uh, she wanted to me to explore whatever I want to do and never force me into something that I don't. So I'm sure that she was happy when I told her that I wanted to be a chef, but she wanted to make sure that I had all the opportunity before because this life is not an easy life. You work crazy amount of hours. Uh, there is always standing and, uh, you know, you're. You, when you are a, a head chef, you have to deal with a lot of uh, different heads and brains. So it's very stressful. And, you know, she wanted to to make sure that I understood that. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, that's a good mama, I think. So you went to culinary Thank school. Uh, well, no, no, <laughs> I mean, when, my, my culinary school was at home. I, I right. basically started to work at a very young age. So, OK, did you work in kitchens then at a young age? Uh, yeah, well, I uh, I started with uh, making bread with my auntie, mm -hmm. and then I tried to make pastry miserably failed with my grandfather because my grandfather was so strict, like I couldn't change uh, uh, nothing, a uh, hair, even uh, even the way he dressed. And you have to be like this. And, okay, you know what? I like eating pastries. <laughs> I don't like making it. But maybe, maybe if I, well, with Candace is different. Because Candace make it so much fun. You know, my grandfather was like a, like a, a general in an in a army. Oh, you're, you're going to do uh, this, 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 and that. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, that's how a lot of um, chefs are in culinary school that I understand. that They're very strict. They're very regimented. Some are, yeah. at least, to sort of kind of teach you the ways of the kitchen as far as cleanliness and, and the right way yeah. to do things. So, I, I mean, I can appreciate that about 
grandpa. I took I took that from uh, so from my grandpa, like cleaning after myself mm-hmm. and uh, everything has to have the uh, the spot in the right in the right place. But you know, cooking is also so much fun. You get to make food. You get to create something out of nothing, and also you get to see people eating what you create. So I think that's the most amazing thing that you can give to a person. Like uh, the first bite that they take out of your plate and you see the little smile of people, that makes your day. Like there's nothing right? that, nothing uh, like that, nothing for me. I, I love to cook and I've said this before a thousand times, there's nothing like someone telling you, oh my gosh, this is the best fill in the blank I've ever had. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I, I, I love that. I love that so much. Mm-hmm, for sure. I get emotional talking. So look. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love it. I get emotional over food too. Food and family. I don't know, right? There's just something about it. Yeah, the only problem is that when I see myself in the mirror and I see my belly grow, it's like I get so much <laughs> emotional with myself. <laughs> Hey, we're in a pandemic. You're allowed. You're allowed. Be, I know. Be That's easy the on yourself. That's the hair too. You know. Yeah, we were talking about your pandemic hair. I think you look fabulous today. So. Thank you. Thank uh, you so much. Let's talk about the restaurant in um, Campania that you worked at. Uh, in Campania. Campania. Yeah, Regional Campania. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I it's just okay. Um, how did you get involved in that restaurant? Uh, well, which one are you talking about with, uh, with my chef Rosanna? Chef Rosanna, yes. Well, she, she was a friend of a family and uh, she happened to be an amazing chef and a Michelin star chef too. So I get to learn a lot of technique and a lot of uh, different way to see a, like a tradition. Mm-hmm. So she basically was my mentor because she took something that was so pure like mozzarella di bufala and she transformed it in so many other ways. So that moment for me was like uh, when, when a light uh, li- lightning struck your head, it's like, oh my God, you can actually create fun stuff with cooking. So, and you know, I still have today, she came to, uh, before pandemic, she came to to eat at the pizza. And I, for me, it was like uh, uh, like she was eating my food and it's like, oh, at the end of the day, you got something from it. I'm happy. I'm happy. So wow. You know what's cool? You know what's cool? It's everything. And I I, I love saying this because there is not enough uh, uh, recognition for women in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that should uh, that should change. And it's changing. And I'm happy. But all my life. I've been trained and uh, bossed by the most amazing women. My mom, my auntie, Rosanna, and my business partner is Candice Nelson. So I'm blessed. Yeah. Well, I I don't even know what to say to that. I feel like uh, boss women are just that. I mean, especially those who are hardworking. They've got the drive. They know what they want. Um, yeah, they're excellent leaders. And I'm, I'm glad to see that you there are. Learn. A, a lot of more. You can learn that. a lot. Yeah, for sure. What did Chef Rosanna teach you specifically? I know you talked about, you know, just the mozzarella for, for instance, something so simple. Were there other things that she taught you that you are still doing today? Well, respect for the ingredients. Like uh, mm-hmm. everything has to start from uh, the most amazing quality ingredient. And uh, even if you are transforming an ingredient, you should never lose uh, you should never lose the original uh, purpose of their ingredient so that was the most uh, greatest thing that uh, that i learned from from rosanna because she's she's just amazing to me it's like uh, i put her on a pedestal like uh, way above me that's awesome i still today i'm trying to impress her so well i i think you're probably doing a really good job even your the tomatoes that you use on your pizza, those are very specific. You're very, very specific about the ingredients that you use in your kitchen right now. Yeah, well, everything is well thought of. Also, I wanted to uh, value the place where I live, Santa Monica, and uh, you know we have a beautiful uh, farmer's market. So I like to talk with farmers and to see what's in season, and I use it on season. But the three ingredients that uh, grew up with me in my childhood, they didn't change the flour, the tomatoes, and the fior di latte cheese that come from Agerola, which is close uh, to Naples. Mm-hmm. Then we import the, the base we imported from uh, from Naples, but all the rest it comes from uh, the surrounding. Beautiful. It's a nice combination of the things that you love: Italy and yeah. California. 
Oh, I love I love staying here. The weather and the people, and it reminds me of home. That's why I'm mm. a little less homesick, but mm. I'm still I still miss my people and my my land. Of course, of course. Uh, you came to the United States in 2010, correct? Mm -hmm. What was behind the decision to come to America? You know, uh, I had lost my mom uh, like uh, a couple of years before mm -hmm. that. And, uh, you know, I couldn't live in the same house where I grew up with my mom. Like, whatever I, I put my my eyes, like, I saw her and it made me feel a little bit uh, down. So, you know, I had this opportunity to come over here and I, I just took it. I didn't know the language. I didn't know nothing. I had no place to be. Uh, I just took it and... I had fun living in a van uh, for four or five months in Venice Beach. <laughs> really? It was amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. It's the best time of my life. Oh, why so? Why? Just no res no responsibility? No, I had no money. <laughs> <Simple like that. laughs> I had 300 bucks, and uh, that's that, that what I found. So. so, obviously, I can't even imagine losing. losing my mom right now i mean just i can't even i can't even put myself in that frame of mind did you leave because obviously it was tough being there everything reminded you of her were you also looking for some new opportunities or did you just need a break did you just need to get out i needed a break but also i wanted to always to 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 learn about other culture i feel like uh, uh people that are different for me are uh, stimulating like i see uh, it gets me very curious to to learn and to know different cuisine, different people, different way of thinking. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people see a barrier. I don't. I see open doors. I, I love to learn about uh, the differences because, you know, uh, it, it, it can always enrich you with something. So I, I love that. And I got so lucky because in Los Angeles, there's so many cultures. From the Latino culture to the to the Asian culture uh, to the African American culture, so you know, and, and I love that. So I, I got to talk with the, one of the, some of the most amazing people uh, on earth, and not even travel that far, that far because right. they're all here. They're right there in front of you. So you're living in a van in Venice Beach. Um, are you worried at all about? Finding work. I mean, you've got incredible talent, obviously, behind you. So, do you start looking to work in kitchens? Well, I had a job, but it didn't start yet because the restaurant wasn't open yet. Ah. And uh, when I came over here, uh, and you know, when it started, I started to meet uh, other people. I got lucky that one. I got an article on LA Magazine when I started to work in this restaurant. I don't even remember the name of the restaurant. Uh, it was on the 26th Street uh, here in Santa Monica. And, uh, you know, this article came up uh, and says uh, one of the best pizza in the, in the neighborhood, you know, in, in town. And a lot of celebrities started to come to, to the restaurant to, to taste, you know. You say, yeah. okay, there's a good pizza. Let's go. Let's go find it. And one of these uh, celebrity was Chris O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. That at the time, uh, it was like the first year that I was here in the U.S., and I didn't speak nothing. But the only thing I understood when Chris wanted to meet me at the table, pizza, delicious, home, home, teach me. That's it. <laughs> That's it. With, with a lot of help of translating for people. And the next day I found myself at Chris O'Donnell's house cooking pizza in his beautiful oven. And uh, he started trying to communicate with hands, with the help, with everything. Yeah. And then I, I don't know how, maybe it's the pizza and the wine. We became friends and we started to, he started to host these uh, Sunday parties where I will cook pizza and he will uh, invite all these other people. And then word of mouth made me go to houses of other beautiful people and meet more people. And then I met Candace and Charles. <laughs> Amazing, amazing how that works. It doesn't hurt that celebrities like your cooking. I mean, right? They they know the right people for sure. P.S. I've had a crush on Chris O'Donnell since I was maybe eight years old. So he's a he's a very good looking man. <laughs> he is a very good looking man. Also, sounds like he's incredibly nice and sweet, and just wanted you to teach him how to cook pizza. The whole his family. Well, it started like a teaching, and then uh, I remember what he says. Like, you know what? You're good at your job. I'm going to go enjoy my wine with my guest and you keep doing pizza because I feel like that's that's good spot for you. Perfect. Perfect. So you're cooking for other celebrities and other big names in L.A. And then you meet 
um, uh, the Nelsons, right? So let's talk yes. about that. When did you meet them? I met at uh, Chris O'Donnell house, okay. one of uh, the, the gathering that he was doing. And, uh, you know, I, I had been fun already. I have a, a huge sweet tooth. I love pastries. I don't like making it, but I love, uh, I love uh, eating it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, by shovel in my mouth, yeah. I'm crazy. <laughs> and then I've been a fan of uh, Candace Nelson uh, the dessert way before I met her. So I ordered sprinkles cupcake, the ice cream, and she took a bite of a pizza. And then I found Candace walking uh, towards me. She said, you know, I'm, the, I'm Candace. Nice to meet you. I taste your pizza. I think it's amazing. And we started talking and I told her, you know, I hope one day that I get the chance to open up my little spot. And she was like, I would love to help you, Charles. And then I started to talk with Charles too. And then the whole concept of Pizzana was born by us talking on what we wanted and how we wanted to translate a pizza. Amazing. So here you are, this Italian kid in LA cooking pizza for, for celebrities and other folks. And, and all of a sudden someone says, I want to open a restaurant with you. What, what's yeah. going through your brain? Well, honestly, it's, it was star tracking in, 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 in the beginning. It's like, uh, is this really going to happen? Am sure. I talking like uh, I lived uh, like I was looking the, the scene like out of my body. Like uh, I was watching a movie. Right. And then uh, it's, it's true. But honestly, the funniest thing that happened to me when I told my family that I was cooking pizza for all these uh, really famous people mm -hmm. that we only saw on uh, movies, I said, come on, stop. Stop lying. Come on, stop lying. Nobody believed me. Nobody believed me. No. And they thought that I was a liar. And, th and then I had Chris, can you video chat with me? So they stopped <laughs> calling me a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. Well, when it happens, when uh, Charles, uh, me and Charles find, uh, me and Charles and Candace found the, the first location of Pizzana, and I saw him started to tear down the place to build the pizzeria, I told, I, I look at myself in the mirror, Oh shoot! This is happening. So you better put your A game and uh, just do things right. So I got lucky because beautiful people are uh, the people that supporting me, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the effort was minimal for me because I have a lot of love from people that pushed me into the opening up and uh, Los Angeles. Actually, all the people of Los Angeles like showed me so much love even during this pandemic they're supporting us every day so i, I don't know how to say thank you mm. enough yeah. so i'm a little i'm a little kid from caserta close to naples and now i'm here in los angeles and when i walk down the street people know me it, it still feels weird to me but it's beautiful oh i love that and i'm sure they're so glad you're here <laughs> your whole neighborhood thank is probably you. glad you're here was it very important to you when you're starting this restaurant to make sure getting back to the ingredients that you were doing things the way that your aunt taught you you were doing things the way your mama taught you in the kitchen how important was that for you for me it was uh, respecting my guests mm -hmm. first of all because you know uh, uh, I, I don't like to say lies on what i use or what i put on the menu so if i say that i use uh, an ingredient it better be there mm -hmm. and also it better be uh, use it at the best of uh, the qualities because when you make food to people you're responsible for the health of people so that was my first uh, my first thought so I want to do good for by people when they come here they eating a piece of pizza but also they eating a piece of uh, they, they had to be healthy I don't want to give them uh, a pizza that you give a bite and then you drink a glass of water and you're burping your way up home so it's, it happened, it happened, it happened. I had my first pizza in the United States was from a, a chain and I tasted the pizza, drank a glass of water and I had nightmares for a week. <laughs> and, and, and I said, no, I'm not gonna do that to people, so. Thank you, thanks for not doing well, that to us. That's why we do, uh, we call it slow dough, which uh, it ferments two days, two to three days it's all naturally uh, levained. Uh, I have a, a starter that I brought with me the day that I came in this country. Right. Uh, in a jar, hidden very nice. I hope, uh, pre, uh, like I prayed every day that the custom didn't stop me because without that starter, there is no pizza. There is no pizza at all for me. Right. So, 
and it was started by my auntie 65 years ago. So I have a 65 years old uh, child that I have to feed uh, twice a day in, uh, in my store. That is amazing. And you smuggled it into the U.S. I love it. I, I know. I know. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. He, had, he still doesn't have a, a, a permit of a green card, so oh. I'm sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, I don't think the authorities will come after you. Just give them pizza. <laughs> if anybody shows up at your door, say, here, eat this. It'll be fine. Um, but I do love the fact that you, I could eat your pizza, and then I feel like I could go to Naples and eat pizza and be like, it's the same. Yeah, well, I'm trying to do what what I used to do with my auntie when I was a kid. Like, uh, they, this is her, her recipe, and I try to make it into a pizza, from the bread to a pizza. So it's mm -hmm. well fermented. We cook it at lower temperature, uh, respect of the true Neapolitan pizza, because I want the slice to hold all the ingredients, which Neapolitan pizza, you, you can hold it, but you have to fold it a couple of times. Right. So I wanted to do something that had my fingerprint on it, and we call it Neo-Neapolitan, which is a, a new style based on the tradition of Neapolitan. Mm -hmm. And you said slow dough, so it's fermented for two days. Do you think that has a lot to do with how it breaks down in, in your system? Because you were mentioning the... Well, so yeah, go ahead. Well, the problem is, like, uh, if, if you ferment your dough very fast, depending on also... Uh, what kind of flour you use you know you can ferment a good dough even in uh, in 12 hours 16 hours depending on the flour that you use but uh, i wanted the bacteria that are present into the the starch to break down starch and sugar okay. so they become from complex to simple so when you eat your body has to take all the the good stuff and assimilate and then all the rest they go where they go <laughs> they go bye bye yeah. Um, let's talk about the tomatoes you use, San Marzano tomatoes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's got beautiful you, tomatoes. Yes, and you actually, because you were on, as we talked about, the chef episodes, uh, you were featured in one of those, and it was such a good education for me because while I've always used San Marzano tomatoes, they're not the San Marzano tomatoes that you use because there's different. There, there are different brands out there that are actually they say that they're San Marzano style, but it's not the legit tomatoes that are coming from Italy, right? Well, the, there is a lot of uh, of, uh, of trying to to sell San Marzano tomatoes. You right. Know, if you think about San Marzano, it's a small town up. Uh, it's, it's a small it's a small town, uh, and there is no way that they have enough land to Im export like tomatoes <laughs> right. everywhere in the world. You know, so there is a region that all the the San Marzano tomatoes are planted. So, uh, and plus there is San Marzano style tomato because some of the seed came up to be here in California and there's people that are planting it over here, but there's San Marzano style, which is the seed, but it's not planted in, uh, in Naples. Mm -hmm. So I use San Marzano tomatoes that are from a land of a friend of mine that does the tomato just for us. And we use it, the weekend and every year, and then we use it uh, on, on our pizza. So we imported we imported those tomatoes. We we produce them in summer, then uh, mm -hmm. important, and then what we use. But there are different brands and different style of tomatoes. They are wanna be San Marzano, but they are really not. Right, right, because it's very very specific. But I did get a mm -hmm. good dose of education when you were on that show. Let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, obviously, your talent. I guess your talent and really who you are as a person probably has led to where you are today, no? Yes, I, I, so. I guess so. Well, I mean, I because so. obviously word of mouth, it plays a huge role in this. And if your pizza wasn't good, no one would be talking about it. So people were talking about how talented you are, and then that just sort of steamrolled into what you're doing right now. Did the chef show contact you and say, hey, we, we've got to come bake with you, please? Well, the... John, John Favreau came to Pizzana when we opened and uh, uh, he tasted the food. And because John has a, her, his grandmother is from Benevento, which is very close for where I was uh, in, in, in Italy. And we started to talk and over meatballs. Oh, you know, I find very interesting that your meatballs are smaller size 
uh, my grandma used to make it for me like that. So, and I found the flavor very similar. So we started to bond over meatballs and then he tasted all the food and then I, I didn't see him anymore. And then all of a sudden it comes a call. As you know, John is doing a, a, a new show and mm-hmm. he would love uh, if he can come uh, over there with uh, Chef Roy Choi and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and follow your process. Uh, do it. And I say, I'll be honored. It, it's amazing. I get, to, I get to do something with John Favreau and I, it's going to be taped. So it's going to be a beautiful memory. And then he came and he was so hands on. It's yeah. amazing. He's so, so talented. It's like uh, very talented making pizza too and understanding flavor, understanding uh, how a person is uh, when uh, when it works. It, it, it was very good. I, I had him come at 4 a.m. in the morning and he came at 4 a.m. in the morning. I, you know, it's funny. I've seen that episode probably about five times just because it's just so beautiful. Your food is just so beautiful. But I Thank noticed you. it was dark outside and all of you were like little puffy eyes. Everybody was a little sleepy. Why 4 a.m. in the morning? Well, uh, we have to plan to make the dough uh, very mm. early in the morning and all the prep because I don't like uh, like uh, uh, food that is prepped way, way, way in advance. Like respecting the ingredient is mm-hmm. the, the most important thing. So if I prep something, it has to be used by the day or the next day or maximum two, two, two three days when... The, the the ingredient permits that but i don't like uh, like uh, taking an ingredient and just uh, storing and then use it whenever i want you lose freshness you lose qualities and same goes to the dough you know and uh, you, mm-hmm. you have to prep and because you li- you work with the live uh, uh, bacteria so that are in the in the in the yeast good bacteria uh, you need to treat that with respect so you know you have to, you have to sing to it you have to mm-hmm. feed them you know you have to so, pet sometimes it sometimes my yeah, we do. We, we give, we, you saw it, we give a very good massage with mm-hmm. a very good rub. Mm-hmm. I call it the dospa. That's the word that the Perfect. upstairs is. It's what, the dospa. Um, and this is a silly question, but do you sing in the kitchen? Oh, yes. Oh, I, I start to sing a Chris O'Donnell House opera. Uh, like, Stop uh, it. Uh, I'm not kidding. I'm like, and like at 8 p.m. every Sunday, a Chris O'Donnell House was me singing or solo mio. And uh, he, he was always making this joke. I think uh, when they hear you, they know that Daniele is here making pizza because he says PM. <laughs> That's amazing. That's why your dough is so happy. You sing to it. Well, I try to be very positive. I try to be very happy to, uh, you know, and uh, that is a thing that I learned from uh, my partners and uh, from Chris O'Donnell because I wasn't a very positive person, uh, but I learned to become one because, you know, from positive thinking, positive come very good things. So, yeah, positive energy begets positive energy. That's one of my mantras. Yeah. Um, why weren't you a positive person? Because where everything that happened to me, like you know, working uh, since you were a kid in a kitchen, mm-hmm. and not having the time to go out and you know spend that much time with your friend. Even though I had some freedom, you know, it's uh, I don't want to say that I was a slave sure, uh, sure. at eleven years old. I had freedom, but. Uh, you know, growing up in the kitchen is not uh, as the same of growing up as like a regular childhood. Mm-hmm. Plus, I lost my mom, mm-hmm. and the same year I lost my grandpa, my auntie, and uh, and my mom, and one of my cousins. So my brain was like shut down. I like, bet uh, I was seeing everything black. So when I changed, I tried to see positivity in everything that I was doing. Even living in a van, uh, it's fine. You know, I'm meeting. I'm living a dream. I'm uh, in California. I only see this street uh, on Venice Beach. You saw all these people working out, absurd muscle muscles. I say, oh my God, I saw this on a, on a TV show. So I was happy. And then, you know, think, good things started to happen to me. And, uh, you know, if, if you're positive and you try to be on uh, good karma, do good to other people, good things probably might happen to you. Hmm. That that makes me uh, choke up a little bit. Um... Because it is, it's it's hard to be positive when you're surrounded by a lot of either negativity or things that are sad. It's 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 really hard to be positive, and I can tell you're a super joyful person. I I love life. I wish I could live forever, but <laughs> I, 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 I guess it's not it's not what I'm <laughs> what I'm going to. But I try to live my life at fullest every day, each mm-hmm. day, 
and try to give a laugh to to, to people, you know. And uh, but I get pissed off too, you know. I don't want to be like a, <laughs> I'm I'm this angel. Sure. I'm still Italian. I'm hot blooded. I, uh. I scream and I throw stuff around, uh, you know. <laughs> I try to be I try to be as much calm as possible. Let's say that. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's talk about that. In the kitchen, what really what really makes you mad in the kitchen? What's just like uh, uh... not not caring. Like not caring. If you come if you come to, to, to work and you're there for just for the paycheck, that's not the right place for Get you. Get out of like, here. Like uh, yeah, if you if you touch ingredient and there is something burning or something that is overlooked and you still want to serve that, that pisses me off like that. You don't want to be around uh, in, uh, if something like that happens. The, the blood just starts to boil. I can understand what somebody recognizes. So, so, sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, it, it wanna, I tried to not happen again. And then you can happen again. But the important thing that you recognize that you're, you cannot serve something that is not right to somebody. Amazing. I love that philosophy. So when you watched the show back on Netflix, when they were in your mm -hmm. kitchen, were you happy with it? Were you satisfied with that episode? I was very happy, but also very shy. I was like, oh my God, that's how I look. That's oh my God, look at my belly. I'm so fat. <laughs> oh, stop it. I love that I, episode. I, I absolutely love it. Again, I've watched it maybe five or six times. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I... I a lot of people saw it and then they kept like texting me and mm -hmm. uh, on, on Instagram and I was overwhelmed. Like I got over like two, three thousand uh, DMs on Instagram when the episode uh, came up and like, oh my God, <laughs> I was just making pizza, guys. So uh, thank you so much for the love. I appreciate it. So. Yeah, maybe you were just making pizza, but it's your, again, it's your connection to the ingredients and it's your love of what you're doing and you can see it. You can see it in your face. You can see it in your hands. You can see it when you're watching other people eat your food. You can absolutely see how Thank much you. you love what you're doing. I love pizza. I love carbs. Sorry, <laughs> I do. You need a bumper sticker that says, I love carbs. We need to get you one of oh, those. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get it. I don't, I don't have tattoos, but I'm going to have a tattoo pretty soon. So I love carbs. Beautiful. I love it. I think that's a brilliant <laughs> idea. Let's talk about the meatballs you made specifically in that episode. Uh, whose recipe was that for those meatballs you made? That's my mom. Okay. That's my mom. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I basically open up the, the refrigerator and my mom uh, wrote all these quantities. So I have her book uh, in my apartment. And when I had to make the meatballs for my partners, you know, I don't even understand why there is lamb in those meatballs. Usually in Naples, meatballs are made just with the, uh, one meat or maybe pork and beef. Right. But there's lamb, in my mom meatballs, there's lamb, and I don't understand why. But you, you didn't question it. You just follow the recipe. Nope, you shut up and you make what your mom wrote. So <laughs> that's it. When you, when you made those maybe for your partners and you tasted one, do you, do you feel mom with you? Like when you, when you make some of the food that, that she used to make, do you I feel? Do. Okay. I do, I do a lot, you know. Uh, uh, when people ask me what's in the sauce of the meatballs, it's, uh, guys, it's tomato sauce and salt. Right. That's it. I swear to God, there's no secret. That's all I put: tomato sauce and salt. Not even garlic. All the flavor come from uh, uh, the meatballs and uh, you know all the the, the, the juices that come out uh, that they soak the sauce. But that's all I use: tomato, good tomatoes and salt. Amazing. When did uh, Pizzana open? Uh, in 2017, if I don't get wrong, April 21st. Okay. Or to April 23rd. I don't remember. Okay, but 2017 is when you guys opened the doors. Yes. Huge. But we met way before. We met way before. Britana was a, a two, three years uh, project. We met in 2016. No, sorry, in 2013. Okay. With uh, Candace and Charles. The seed was planted, and it just needed it needed some work. You, you had to you had to go through that project, the steps of that. Yeah, well, we we even if the food that we make is simple, mm -hmm. we had to make sure that it was uh, simple, but like craveable, like uh, delicious, and that took that took some time. You know, you you read the menu, you find something that is. Uh, 
a little bit explorative, like uh, the Cacio Pepe pizza or the Neo Margarita. Uh, that I wanted to make reinvent the margarita. Mm. I wanted to make my own margarita pizza, and I did this basil dust on top. But the core menu, like meatballs, there is uh, arancini, there is broccolini from the farmer's market. Is everything pretty simple, but it's the best quality that is out there. Fantastic. So 2020 rolls around. You guys are cooking along at Pizzana. How has the pandemic changed things for you guys, like, like every other restaurant across the country, right? You know, we had... we. We had to adjust, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for sure you're not doing the same as before, but uh, like I told you before, when uh, when something like this happens and you have the whole community around you supporting you, it's just overwhelming. The, the only thing that makes my, cry, my, my heart cry is uh, when I open up the door and I don't see people and I don't see uh, seated, all, all the little voices that you see when there is a happy restaurant, like mm -hmm. I don't, I don't hear that, and that puts you a little bit down. But at the end of the day, you know, when you hear the orders coming in and uh, people calling, please uh, stay strong, keep it up, we love you, and so much support for the community, mm -hmm. and uh, we try to give back. Uh, we raised like over eighty, eighty thousand dollar. Uh, to serve meals to the first responder that were amazing in Los Angeles and uh, in the surrounding area. We mm -hmm. try to do our part. We still do. We still do uh, uh, until today. We try to support as well uh, other people. And I try to support my fellow uh, restaurateur by ordering food and by going over there and picking up. And, you know, it's, it's a beautiful community in Los Angeles about all these restaurants. And it's... Uh, you can find a little happiness uh, in seeing how much people came together during this difficult time. 100%. I didn't even think about that as a chef, that that would be tough when you're used to hearing the buzz of the restaurant and happy people and people going, oh my gosh, this is so good. And then all of a sudden it's just dead quiet. But that's the reason why a chef cooks is to see people coming and create communal. Like you sit at the table, there's a sharing moment. You see a mom, a grandparent, a kid. Uh, you see them play. And, you know, in that, in that moment, when you're stretching pizza, when you're cooking something and you serve it to them, it's like, uh, I am part of the family right now because I'm making sure that that family is fed and happy and has good memory around the table. Yes, absolutely. I love that. There's nothing like, there's nothing on this planet like eating food and drinking wine with the people you love true especially drinking wine love it <laughs> me, me too honey i love i love my wine i love my vino um we're gonna wrap up just a little bit but i do uh want to touch on um the fact that you know obviously your your success with with pizzana people can actually look at because i i've never eaten at pizzana sadly mm -hmm. I'm going to. Well, you should. When everything opens up, that's that should be your first thing to do. That is my promise. <laughs> that is my promise. But uh, your Instagram account. Can we just talk yes. about that for a hot second? What what, what happened? It's so. Did I do something wrong? It's mean. Yes, you are mean and cruel because you are making these beautiful things and you're opening up these ginormous sandwiches that are super cheesy and I can't eat it. I'm, I know, I'm sorry, but, you know, I, I, it's my only way to communicate to people right now of what I'm working on, what I'm mm. doing. And, it's working. Know. It is working, my friend, because the the things that you post on your Instagram account, if anyone's listening, please go follow him. You're literally, my mouth waters when I just, like, go through your story, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, amazing stuff. So um, Thank you so much. And I don't know who, there's someone also that is – on Instagram that's just eating your food. And I don't like that person either because I'm super jealous. <laughs> well, these are people that I've made friends who do it. So when I do something new, they come to the to the restaurant and they just come outside and uh, give me instant feedback. So, you know, uh, oh, I love this. So maybe you could do a little bit of this, you know, and then I take all this information. It's amazing. Has there been anything in the last few months that you've created that you're just in love with? If it's a sandwich, if it's a pizza, anything that's new, that's fresh, that 
you have sort of come up with in the last few months that just just really makes you happy? Uh, I don't know about making me happy, but it was a challenge for me to make a pizza with a pineapple, which I'm Italian. You know, everybody, trust me, everybody, everybody say when you put a pineapple on a pizza and Neapolitan guy and Italian guy dies, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and so I, I took that as a challenge, you know, and uh, I, I tried to do uh, a pizza that made the pineapple work. And actually, I ate it and I liked it. So it's uh, it's something that I dare you to try when uh, when you come. Mm. And I might change your mind. Mm. What else is on the pizza? <laughs> uh, there is a slow roasted uh, pork butt from the farmer's market. Okay. Uh, there is a little bit of jalapeno, smoked cheese, and there is a pineapple jam. It's not like a, a pineapple, like a pure pineapple out of the... Uh, All right. on, on the straight fruit, but I transform it. I did like a barbecue sauce almost, uh, like a jam. But the last thing that made me like uh, eat like two or three a, a day until I was uh, <laughs> uh, I, I was almost dead, it was I made my version of a Cubano sandwich. I saw that bad I boy. Was, it was delicious. It was very good. I take all this idea from where I where I am. I like contamination, and I like uh, mm -hmm. uh, taking from other culture and trying to translate it in what I will do with it, like Italianize a little bit. And the Cubano people went nuts, thank yeah. God. And, uh, and me too. I was like eating like. A <laughs> <laughs> Was You're crazy. onto something. Well, I'll definitely, I'll try, I'll try your pizza with pineapple on it. I'll try anything once for sure. It's the name I put on the pizza. It's sacrilegio, which you know, sacrilegious in uh, <laughs> in English. I like to play a lot. So. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Okay, let's uh, wrap up a little bit and get to my final three questions, which are yes, um, best advice you've ever been given. The best advice. Uh, Breathe before talking. Who gave you that? My partner. Okay, and what was the meaning behind that? I was too much. Uh, I was too passionate, like uh, too 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 passionate. And I sometimes I shut off other people when they're talking, and you know that's that's a classic Italian thing to do when you are overwhelmed. It's like you breathe, calm down, and then you can talk. That's brilliant advice. It kind of it kind of follows with that whole think before you speak kind of thing. Yes, yes, I'm, true. That that that, that was the uh, the uh -huh. advice basically, but it was put in so much nicer ways, like <laughs> breathe, something that keeps you alive. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I've never been good at that either, so I feel you there. But that is fantastic <laughs> advice. Uh, Daniel, what's your happy place? Uh, there's more than one. It's when I get to hug my son. And, uh, you know, when I get to see uh, people, when I go in the restaurant, when they work and they smile at me because uh, they like what they're doing. So that means that I give them something that, that is happy. Fantastic. Does your kiddo like to cook with you? My kid loves pizza and he <laughs> loves cooking. He loves cooking. And I try to do the same thing that my mom did to me. Like I try to, you know, mm -hmm. explore other things. You know, your kid, you know, this is a very hard life. So if you want to do something else, I will welcome you to do something else. But if he wants to be a chef, he wants to be a chef. So. Fantastic. Okay. If you were given a final meal and a final drink, what would that look mm -hmm. like? Margarita pizza and a beer. <laughs> oh, a beer. What kind of beer? Oh, an Italian beer. I like uh, the, the Nastro Azzurro beer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, okay. we're doing commercial. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not an ad. This is not an ad. That's a uh, pretty Good. pretty simple. No no red wine at your table. Well, pizza and beer is uh, one of the best combination to me. Fantastic, um, Daniel. You've been so much fun. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This is fun. Um, I love your story. I absolutely adore the fact that you grew up around food. You grew up with a, a mama chef, and you made the trek to the United States. Not really not really knowing what was in your future, right? No, I, I, like it was a, a jump in the, in the emptiness. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know what was going on. Well, I will say this. I, 
your success obviously well deserved because you just I, I feel like you've just done it right from day one so congratulations thank you so much thank well, you so much well and i just want to tell everybody out there who is listening please follow daniel on instagram you will get very hungry very very fast and if you want to watch any episodes of off script you can do so at ktvl.com or on youtube and you can listen to episodes anywhere where you like to listen to podcasts one more time daniela uditi yes Look at that. Yeah, that's amazing. From Pizzana. And I hope to uh, visit you and your restaurant very, very, very soon. Please, before that, everybody stay safe, keep safe, and uh, let's try to get out this pandemic very fast so we can all eat pizza. Yes, again. sir. Thank you very much.